Hey everyone, John from Nintendo Life here, and the Nintendo Switch OLED model is pretty darn nice. It's by no means essential, but if you're primarily a handheld gamer, this thing can really elevate how games look, and in some cases even play. We've been fiddling around for a while now, and while every game looks good on this thing, some of them are really a step above. So without further ado, here are 30 games to check out on the Nintendo Switch OLED model. J John, do you realize this is Donkey Kong and that game comes from the 80s? Yes, I do realize that, and it looks really good on the OLED. So one of the biggest things about the OLED is unlike most displays, this can showcase a pure black. Basically the way the OLED works is every pixel is lit individually, and the black pixels simply aren't lit, so it's the same color as the screen is when it's off. It looks fantastic. And games that showcase this well are, in a lot of cases, the older retro games. So games like Castlevania with the black borders on the side look amazing, because those borders basically just aren't lit. Unfortunately, the Switch Online stuff doesn't look so great because those borders are grey and kind of in the way, but Donkey Kong is an entirely black canvas. So imagine a screen where only Mario, Donkey Kong, the barrels, and the railings are lit. That's how it looks. A lot of this stuff is hard to convey because you're likely watching this on a standard screen, but in person, this just looks outstanding. Plus, there's a vertical mode too, and the way the kickstand works now, it's very easy to just flick this up and put the switch straight vertically on its side. Don't dismiss this because it's Donkey Kong, it looks amazing on the OLED. How about modern game though? Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. This is a very obvious one. Just think Rainbow Road. The sky is a pure black, and the tiles on the road itself are these very high contrast glowing colours. It looks magnificent. I find the standard Mario Kart 8 Rainbow Road looks the best, because the sky really is a pure black. Unlike the N64 one, which is more of a grey, because it's lit by all the buildings from down below. But no matter what, every stage in this game looks outstanding. OLED is more than just pure blacks. The contrast level and the brightness is so far ahead of the standard Switch. So much so that going back to the regular model is pretty hard. Everything looks a bit washed out now. So yeah, it's by no means a, a necessary upgrade, but still, it's, it's one that you really appreciate once you've gone in. But how about an OLED launch title with Tetris Effect? In my opinion, this is downright the best game to showcase this screen. So many levels are pure blacks, and the way things work, there are high contrast colours against those blacks, and it just looks like there's floating Tetris blocks on a grid, with all these colours just popping off the screen. It looks really, really, really good. This is a showcase of how dark it can get and how vibrant it can be, but also the speakers are much better on this thing, much louder. Tetris Effect is simply a spiritual experience, and playing this thing on the OLED just elevates that. But going back in time, we have Okami HD. I find some of the best examples for OLED are games with rather simple shading, just kind of like bold, bright colours, and that is Okami to a T. Ever since the PS2, this game's always looked good, but I don't think it's ever looked this good. All the bright and vibrant colours are just brought to life, and the game definitely has its dark moments, but it's when it's showcasing its colour that it really pops on the OLED. Now you should play Okami on anything, but the OLED version is really great. This is probably fairly obvious too, Splatoon 2. So as you start, the stages are kind of grey and empty, but the further you go, the more colourful they become. Suddenly, what were deeper, dark colours become so vibrant and colourful. It's one of those games that's quite hard to look away from because it just looks so enticing. Even just walking around the plaza and reading messages. And by the way, those messages? Yeah, <laughs> they're pure black. So there's a lot of really cool stuff to see in here. Almost don't want to talk about this because it's so obvious, but Metroid Dread. This was the key OLED launch title, and there are so many examples of amazing contrast. I played through this game first on the standard Switch, and it looked amazing. But then I played again on the OLED, and suddenly areas that looked grey beforehand were actually black. A lot of the flooring and background elements are meant to be black, you just can't perceive that on the regular model. Also, there's one point in the game where everything is just black. It's all dim, there's no light anywhere apart from Samus illuminating light from her suit, and that part just looks incredible on this thing. You know what else does? Streets of Rage 4. In fact, this may be one of the best titles to showcase the OLED. This is a game of very deep colours, so many neon colours too. Every element on the screen looks so rooted in the world. It's also the kind of game that looks really good in 720p, and of course that's pretty key when playing in handheld mode. So what you get is a really crisp image with colour bursting out from every facet. This one's a must play. Ikaruga. Now this game looks great no matter what platform you're playing on or what screen you're playing on, but on the OLED it really does look good. 
all the colourful bullets just burst off the screen. And of course, this is another game you can play in Tati mode, the vertical mode. The backgrounds are really rich and bold, and the enemies themselves stand out as well because they're the same colour as the bullets. There's just this brilliant contrast between the foreground and the background, and it's never looked better than this. Any moment we can, we'll talk about Astral Chain, because this is one of the best games on the Switch, and it looks outstanding here on the OLED. This is another game of pretty simple colours, but they're very deliberate what colours to choose. This is a very cyberpunk-inspired world, and everything has kind of a neon flair to it. Everything from the bright hair of characters just looks fantastic on this screen. If you want deep blacks and big, bold, bright colours, then this is a game to try. Speaking of bold, bright colours, Sonic Mania! This thing is worth it for the intro alone. It looks fantastic on this screen. Sonic Mania is just such a colourful game, and there are definitely darker zones in here, like Studiopolis, and all of them look incredible. It's almost like this game was made for the OLED. Everything just looks really great. And then the Encore DLC gives you another colour palette, and that also evolves how everything looks. This is just a really great showcase for this screen. Yeah. Resident Evil 4 on the Switch does not have gyro controls still, Capcom, but it does look great on this. This is not a colourful game, but it is a dark one with quite high contrast. And when you get to areas like the castle, seeing some enemies with their black and red robes, they really, really stand out. I also love how the ray gun looks. I like seeing these bright, colourful flashes on this screen, it just pops off. If you're in a Halloween mood and want to play one of the very best games of all time, this is a great way to do so. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening now, we were very close to choosing Breath of the Wild, but frankly, that game gets a lot of attention already, so let's give it to another one, although Breath of the Wild does also look really good in this thing. But even if we weren't just giving attention to another game, Link's Awakening is without a doubt the more colourful game. There's so many different shades of green, and back on the regular model, some of them are kind of blend into each other, but here, it's so easy to distinguish the difference. And then there's also some dungeons which display some very deep blacks, especially in rooms that aren't lit at all until you light a candle. It also helps that this game is a true beauty. Yeah. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and of course this also includes Ori and the Blind Forest. And one thing I want to showcase is the Xbox Game Studios logo in pure black. So that's cool, but the game itself too is a showcase of colour and depth. Ori themselves is just this bursting glow of white, and back on the regular model that wasn't quite conveyed. But viewing it here, it's like how this was always meant to look. Then you've got the contrast of the backgrounds and the gorgeous art of the foreground. Ori is without a doubt one of the best looking games ever made, and a lot of that does come down to colour. I was impressed viewing this on a TV or the older Switch, but here, this is something else. Yeah. Continuing the Microsoft train is Cuphead, and of course this game looks outstanding no matter how you play it. The Switch port's already stunning, there's not a jaggy in sight, and everything looks so clean on this screen. And that's why it's one of the best showcases for the OLED. The projectiles too have never been easier to perceive, they just stand out so much because of how colourful they are. There's also a ton of pure black in this game, including the main characters Cuphead and Mugman. Yeah. Now, Doom 3 may seem like an odd choice, but without having a black canvas, this game is the showcase for pure blacks. Up until now, most of those games like Tetris Effect and Donkey Kong, they have black backgrounds, but that's not Doom 3. Doom 3 is a game of darkness. You'll spend a lot of time in complete black with nothing but your torch to light the way. And if you turn off your torch, it's like the screen isn't even on, apart from the HUD elements. It's also a really good port of Doom 3, and while games like Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal look amazing for what they are, they aren't exactly clean and clear when docked, and they especially aren't clean and clear when playing in handheld mode. Whereas Doom 3 is just such a sharp game on the Switch. Yeah. New Pokemon Snap came out this year, and I can still barely believe it, but yeah, here we are. And playing levels like the beach during the day is crazy. The, the blue of the water really stands out, and every leaf is just so vibrant, especially in the forest too. Then of course there's day and night levels of every stage, so suddenly those big, vibrant and sunny areas become very dark, and a lot of them do have pure blacks. Pokemon's always been a vibrant franchise, and while games like Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and even Sword and Shield look pretty good on the OLED, New Pokemon Snap is without a doubt the best representation of a Pokemon art style. Everything just feels so alive in this game, and it's brought even more to life by how vibrant and dark it can be. Yeah. Eastward is another recent one, and while the gameplay of this game is very good, what really carries it is the visuals, the art style. Everything from the animated opening to the game itself is just full of light. 
but there's also a lot of moments of darkness, where everything's so dim and is only illuminated by your powers, otherwise it's complete dark. There's also moments with spotlights, and it's just like a colourful aura is circled around a pure blackness. You really have to see it to believe it, but honestly, this just looks incredible on the OLED. Yeah. Choosing between Mario Odyssey and 3D World was pretty tough, because both of them can look really great, especially the Moon Kingdom in Odyssey, that's just a, a great showcase for darkness. But 3D World is just a bit more vibrant, and it also comes with Bowser's Fury. And this may seem small, but during the Bowser battles, the, the sort of the black ink, the black sludge she has lying around, is no longer a grey, it's a pure black sludge. And it looks weirdly great. Just swimming around on Plessy and exploring these big, colourful environments is fantastic. But then 3D World itself is just one of the most vibrant games ever. It's just bursting with colour, and neither of these, 3D World or Bowser's Fury or even Odyssey, have ever looked as good as they do now on the OLED. With Tropical Freeze, I have two words for you. Silhouette level. These were of course introduced in Returns, but many of them in Tropical Freeze are so good in the base game. But imagine it, imagine this, imagine playing a silhouette level with the outline of Donkey Kong, it's like the screen is off. In Busted Bayou, you have these different shades of black, and also sort of green are overlaying everything. But Donkey Kong himself, and Dixie and Diddy and Cranky, are just this pit of blackness. And it's something, it's very hard to describe, but it's something that's incredible to perceive with your own eyes. And again, those different shades of black, I could barely perceive them on the regular Switch, but now it's very clear what is pitch darkness and what's just a little like a, a lighter shade of black. Not grey, just black. And then the rest of the game itself is also bursting with colour. The autumn levels, the underwater levels. There's even a silhouette underwater level with these bright neon colours, and they look so good. Again, this is another game that feels like it was made for the OLED, but of course it was made for the Wii U many years ago now. But still, a brilliant game for this screen. Yeah. Dark Souls can really live up to its name. So I'm showcasing the Tomb of the Giants here. And for those who have played, it is just this pitch dark area. You can find a lantern in this area, but it's so hard to just traverse because it's so dark in this place. And seeing it on the OLED, it's not just dark anymore. It is pitch black. You cannot see where you're going without the glow of your character and the lantern. And this doesn't make it harder, it just makes it more impressive to perceive what is actually black. And sometimes, in fact, it can make it a bit easier, because you can see what is pure black and what's kind of like a little, like a little lighter shade, and that's the way you've got to go. So this really does showcase uh, the technology of the OLED very well. But the rest of the game too, there's lots of different contrast levels in Dark Souls, and sometimes a surprising amount of colour. Yeah. Daniel Hollis from our sister site Pure Xbox shared this image right here, and this kind of speaks volumes. Hades is so much bolder on the OLED. I mean, look at these pools of blood. It's mad how different it looks on the OLED, and this carries throughout the entire game. Everything just looks better and bigger and bolder. There's a lot of pure blacks, but there's also a bunch of big vibrant colours, and the character portraits themselves also look incredible on this display. Hades is one of the best games you can get on the Switch, and this really does do it justice. Yeah. Wonder Boy The Dragon's Trap. This is another gorgeous 2D Switch game, and because of that in handheld mode it looks pristine. But also the colours and the shapes themselves are relatively simple, and that works really well for this kind of screen. It's another one of those things that's hard to convey unless you're seeing the screen yourself, but everything just looks sharper. You'll see cherry blossoms on a tree, and on the regular Switch it looks kind of white, like a white pink. But on the OLED, you can really perceive the colour of the blossoms. This carries through the entire game. The greens are greener, the reds are more red, and the blacks, of course, are a pure, deep black. Yeah. Back to Nintendo, though, with Luigi's Mansion 3, probably Nintendo's darkest game. Not necessarily in terms of tone or horror, but the visuals themselves are pretty dark. Sometimes when Luigi's torch isn't shining on an object, it does look pure black. And also, Gooigi is gooier and richer and deeper than ever. You just want to bite him. Just taste Gooigi. Yum yum. This game looks amazing in handheld mode, and in terms of 3D visuals, I'd say this is the best Nintendo's ever made a game look. It's just rendered and animated beautifully, and beyond the blacks, there's also a big burst of colour. Like the intro's in this golden hotel scene, and that really does shine through on the OLED. <laughs> then we have Fire Emblem Three Houses, and this is here for one big reason. The larger screen. Now, it may not seem like much, but it's very hard to go back to the prior Switch because it just looks small now. 
The units are pretty much the same size, but the screen itself occupies more of the bezel, and it's around an inch larger. And that's a pretty big deal in Fire Emblem, because the text is so small. One inch may not seem like a massive difference, but you really can perceive the larger screen when reading the text. That and the bold character designs really do look pretty good on the OLED. And then our final main title is Paper Mario The Origami King. This franchise may have some problems as of late, but in my opinion, Origami King is one of the best in the entire series, and the visuals themselves cannot be faulted. It is bright, colourful, clear, and just impressive. And if you thought it looked good on the prior unit, imagine it here. Imagine how deep the black of Bobby the bob -omb is. <laughs> it's not quite a pure black, but it does go pretty deep. It's always been a really vibrant game though, and all those colours are brought to life on the OLED. It's a remarkable looking image. You can also pretend your kickstand is origami and like fold it back and forth if you want to. But yeah, the game looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, now it's time for a quick fire round. We're going to go over five smaller indie games, ones that aren't necessarily crazy impressive enough to make this list, but they do still look really, really good. So starting off with Undertale. This is a game with a lot of pure blacks. The borders are pure black, a lot of the backgrounds are pure black, and a lot of the time it's like your character model is just floating across a void. And it does look really good. Same goes for Deltarune as well. Then there's Downwell, which much like Arcade Donkey Kong has no background. It's just pure black the entire way. You see nothing but a few bursts of colour and blood, and that's pretty much it. Limbo, likewise, is like one big silhouette level. It's just black and white the entire time. And it looks incredible. SteamWorld Dig 2 is a brilliant mix of pure blacks and vibrant colours, and this thing, it was incredible on the base Switch, but it looks remarkable on the OLED, and really this is one of the Switch's best games in my opinion. And then finally, Thumper. This game was always an amazing visual audio experience, but now the audio is even better, and the visuals themselves are complemented by the amazing screen. You're usually on a roller coaster of darkness, but there's sometimes a big flash of colours, and they can get really vibrant and out there. This was originally a VR game, but it looks outstanding on the OLED screen. And there you have it, 30 must-play games to try on the Switch OLED model. I've yet to experience a game I wouldn't recommend because frankly everything looks better on this machine, but these titles in particular look outstanding. Anyway, are there any games that weren't on this list that you find really cool, like Cruise and Blast, which I just wanted to mention because that looks really good too. Anyway, let us know your favourite OLED games in the comments below, and of course, go to that subscribe button and give it a tap. That's a glass subscribe button now. And we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. <laughs>